Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, whenever you're watching this video. I hope you're having a good one. This is the question and answer video, and today we've got some questions about a 300 blackout and some about the 25 out 6. Should be fun. Um, before we get there, though, I just want to point out these cool vintage boxes from Winchester. These are new. This is new ammunition in a new box, but they just decided to go back to the, I don't know, 1950s, 1960s and resurrect those boxes. And I think they are really cool. Now, maybe that's because I'm an older guy and it takes me back to my childhood. I can remember my uncles having these boxes sitting around at the farm and stuff. And I just think they're really cool. So if you want to check something new out, look for the old boxes with the new Winchester ammunition. So one of uh, my questions today is from Chris, and he asks about a 25-06. What factory load do you recommend most for the 25-06? I see Hornaday Super Performance has some real nice numbers, and if they're telling the truth, I might want to try that. So what are your thoughts? Well, Chris, I would recommend that you choose your factory loads based on, first, the bullet and your need. I mean, are you hunting varmints or predators like coyotes? Are you going deer hunting? Are you going elk hunting? That's going to determine the bullet you want to use. Heavier um, controlled expansion bullets for the big stuff, elk and the bigger deer, um, but then more frangible, lighter, faster bullets perhaps for the varmints and the predators. So make that decision first. Then be a little bit cautious about factory numbers on velocities. Sometimes they're pretty close to spot on, but other times you're going to get a lot of variation. So I am not going to tell you what I think is the best load because what works well in my rifle isn't necessarily going to work well in your rifle. Those super performance loads definitely, in my experience, go faster than standard. They've got that down pretty well, so you can expect higher velocity with those. But then you might want to look at your accuracy. Some of those super performance loads in various cartridges, in my experience, were not as accurate as a standard. So do you want a little more accuracy or a little more velocity and reach? And you're going to have to determine that by shooting the ammunition. So once you've picked the bullet you think is going to work well for you, you're just going to have to buy that ammo and start testing it. Test it for accuracy, but also velocity if you can get a chronograph. And you can buy some pretty inexpensive chronographs these days for around $100, maybe even down to $80. Or go all the way up to $500 if you want. But it's a useful tool because it will tell you how fast that bullet is going. I chronographed a, a 270 load for a fellow one time, and he was pretty hot about it. He loved it. It was real accurate. He figured, figured he was getting 3,000 to 3,100 feet per second with it because... That's what the loading manual said. It was going 2,730 feet per second. He was pretty disappointed. But those are the sorts of things you learn when you use a chronograph. So pick out your ammo, get a chronograph if you can, shoot for groups, and choose what works best in your rifle. And we won't worry about mine. All right, good question. Now our next question is from a gentleman named Rupert, and he's asking, by golly, about a 25-06, imagine that. <laughs> he says, after watching your comparison video between the 25-06 and the 6.5 Creedmoor, I started to wonder if it would be feasible to have a 25-06 barrel built with a 1-7 in seven twist and a slightly longer throat. Hmm. Think that would work or will he get run into problems? Well, Rupert, as luck would have it, I had one of those built. It wasn't a seven twist, it was seven and a half twist. That's good enough to stabilize these new long heavy bullets coming out in 25. That would be the 131 Ace Blackjack and the 133 I think it is from Berger. And I think they've even got a 135 out. So I think we're starting to see a lot more high BC long heavy bullets in 25 coming out. So it's a smart move to look for a faster twist barrel. I got my barrel from Shaw Custom Barrels in Pennsylvania. Those guys offer some really well-made barrels and I asked them to make a faster twist than normal. And I think they had to buy a special mandrel to make it, but they got her done and I have it on a rifle that they built for me and I just started working with it this year. Need to get back to it now. I have fire formed the regular 25 out six loads in that because it's an Ackley improved. So I'm gonna pick up about 100 feet per second over the standard, I think. 
but I haven't tried the uh, fast bullets yet. I haven't had a chance to get up there and start loading. But when I get around to it, I've got some high hopes because that rifle and that barrel are shooting the factory 25-06 loads beautifully. I'm getting some great groups with it. And I don't know that I've shot 15, 20 rounds through it. So <laughs> I think it's going to work out pretty well. So I wouldn't be afraid of it. If I were you, you might want to check out Shaw Custom Barrels and see what they could do for you. Our final question of the day is from Don, and Don is asking about the 300 Blackout. Can you provide your insight regarding the 300 Blackout cartridge and its use on boar and various species of deer? For well, first a confession, Don, I have not used the black on uh, I have not used the blackout on deer or boars, but some of my friends have, and they were pretty excited about it, which surprised me. I've got to tell you, when I first heard about this cartridge, I just was not impressed, you know. So I, I looked at it with a jaundiced eye because this is a 308 cartridge. It, it shoots 308 bullets, the same as the 300 Winchester Magnum or the 30 odd six, but it's built on a 221 Fireball case. What? The 221 Fireball is so small, it's a 222 Remington shortened. <laughs> so where do they get any powder? They're getting about 10, 15, maybe 18 grains of powder in this thing, depending on the bullet they're pushing. So I think the way that a hunter should look at this is by comparing it to a 3030 Winchester. So this blackout was designed for the military. That's what they had in mind. So is the 30 out 6 and the 7x57, but those are great hunting cartridges. And I think this silly little blackout can be too. So, so hear me out on this one. They're pretty much designing this for an AR platform rifle. AR-15 with that 223 length, about 2.26 inch overall length. It's got to fit that. So that's why it's so short. But then they put this big heavy bullet on it, so you're not going to be driving it very fast. So they're figuring most of their ballistics with a 16-inch barrel. But as a hunter, you're going to probably be looking at a 20-inch barrel, maybe even a 22-inch barrel. Now, the 3030 is routinely put in 20-inch barrel lever-action carbines. So why don't we compare that with the 300 in the same length? You're getting about 100 to 200 feet per second less velocity out of that blackout. So you're fairly close to the 3030, but obviously the 3030 is a little more horsepower, so it should be superior, right? Not necessarily. You've got to consider the bullet. The 3030s are always shooting the round nose or flat nose bullets, whereas the blackout with a vertical stack magazine is designed to shoot spire points. Sharply pointed bullets means they're going to have a higher ballistics coefficient. That means they're going to be more efficient. They're not gonna waste their energy pushing air out of the way. So after about 80, 100 yards of travel, they're actually going to be going faster than the 3030 and having more energy, not less. So crazy as it sounds with that short little cartridge, you're getting 30-30 performance out of that little blackout. Now I wanna give a shout out to J.D. Jones. He is a handgunner who does that designed a series of whisper cartridges based on that 221 fireball. I think he went from like six millimeter on up, six, 6.5, seven millimeter, 30, and he had one called the 300 whisper, which is essentially the same thing, but his cartridges were always proprietary. And the blackout was pushed through SAMI specs so that anyone can load ammunition for it and build it and chamber it in their rifles, not a proprietary cartridge. But uh, hats off to JD for coming up with this whole concept. The official blackout, I think, was released to the public in 2011. So it's been around for a while now. And boy, the hog hunters down in Texas are trying to eradicate all those hogs that are causing so much damage. And they really love this one because one of the, the features that in a in an AR-15, of course, is you've got a lot of shots. And when you've got a sounder of pigs out in an alfalfa field or grain fields, you can get a lot of shots on them in a hurry with that blackout. And a 150 grain bullet can do the job, but they will also load 220 grain bullets on that. So pretty much anything in the 308 size is going to work in this thing as long as it works in your rifle. So yeah, I think it's worth investigating if you're interested in working with a short little round like that 
and an AR-15. And I don't know if anyone makes bold actions for it, but it wouldn't surprise me if they did. Um, and I think it would be even more effective as a hunting round in a bold action. That's it for the questions and answers today, guys. I want to thank you for sending your questions in, especially all of our patrons on Patreon. Really appreciate those questions. Gives us something to come up with to produce these videos. And of course, the help that you give us allows us to keep the lights on. And that's a big deal too. Hey, Ron Spomer signing off with the usual. Hunt honest and shoot straight. Mm -hmm.